All right, folks, on today's video, we're gonna be making this D-Flex Reflex Bamboo Backed Osage Longbow. This is a long one, so go ahead and grab some popcorn. And before we get started, I just wanna remind you to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Tons of bow building and bow hunting content here. And also, check us out on Patreon. I've got like six, seven hours of exclusive bow building content over there. So check it out, let's get started. All right, folks, so for this build, you're gonna need a piece of bamboo backing like I've got here. Uh, we're also gonna be using EA40, which is a two-part uh, epoxy. Uh, also got this from Three Rivers. We're gonna use that for joining our belly splices, gluing on their handle section, and then gluing the backing to uh, the belly laminates. And then the last thing, the last major component that we're gonna need is a couple of slats for the bellies. You can also use Ipe. Uh, a lot of people you make bamboo backed Ipe bows. Uh, for this bill, we're gonna use this Osage. Now, Three Rivers, last I checked, was out of stock on these belly slats. And so uh, the best thing that I can tell you is just to look around online and try to find some of these belly slats. So to join your belly slats, we're just gonna use a simple Z splice and we're gonna get started just by laying it out, drawing the lines, and then we'll go ahead and cut it. All right, so we're gonna cut this Z slice with a little Japanese pull saw here. Uh, the reason I'm doing this is because it's a little bit different than using a bandsaw, and most people that are gonna be building these bows aren't gonna have access to a good bandsaw. And so these things are relatively cheap. Uh, you can get them for 25, 30 bucks, and they actually work pretty doggone good. Uh, you do have to really pay attention to getting uh, your cuts square, front to back, and then also, lining your saw up with these, uh, with these lines that we just drew. Um, and the critical part when you're using these pull saws is that first quarter inch or so. Uh, if you get things out of alignment during that first bit of the cut, it's gonna be very difficult to bring that cut back into alignment. Um, and so what I'm gonna do is just, when I put this saw in there, first I'm gonna make sure it's square front to back, and then I'm just gonna look down the edge of this blade and line it up with those lines that we just drew, and then we should we should come out pretty close to uh, to having a square cut in this Z splice. Now, if you put your thumb on here and use it as a guide to start, you can start with the uh, the finer side of the saw. The saw has a rip side and then a, a finer crosscut side. So I'm just going to put my thumb on there, use that thing to get started, and I'm going to saw this middle line, this straight line first, and then I'm going to saw the, uh, the diagonal cuts. So again, when I'm sawing this thing, I'm looking right down the edge of that uh, saw blade and just making sure it's in alignment with this line right here. Another thing that you can do is look at the reflection of the wood. I can see this piece of wood reflected in the saw blade and I can see that it's making a straight line through there. If my saw is tilted over a little bit, it's gonna look like your wood comes and then dips down. If I'm tilted too far this way, it looks like the wood's kicked up. If I'm tilted too far this way, it looks like it's tilted down. And so just looking at that reflection can help you to, to figure out if you're, got a, if you're making a square cut or not.
Now if you saw it right, you should just be able to take these things where they're sitting like this and just flip them like this. They should meet right up like that. Now I've got just a little tiny, I'm going to take, uh, take the rasp and take that little knob off where, it, where I had to split those pieces off. And then the same on this side, once I do that, those things should fit perfect. There we go. Perfect Z splice with a Japanese pull saw. So we'll go ahead and uh, throw some EA40 in here, clamp this together, and then we'll come back to it tomorrow when it's all dried up. You could probably, I've never tried it, but you could probably do this splice with just tight bond. I'm sure it would work fine. I've just I've never put it to the test. This stuff's got pretty good, pretty long working time, so you don't have to, you don't need to get in a hurry trying to, it's not like five minute epoxy or anything like that. Should have mentioned that before you put your epoxy in there, just make sure you get all the sawdust and all that stuff out of there so you get a good, good fit and good bond. Let me just go ahead and set this up on edge so it doesn't glue itself to the table. Now this, this joint's pretty, pretty tight and so I'm just going to leave it like this. I'm not going to throw any clamps on there or anything like that. Um, you know, if you, if you, if your, uh, if your joint does have, have a little bit of slop in it, you can put some clamps on there. But one problem that I've run into is that when you go to clamp it, it, uh, because these things are wedge shaped, it wants to squish those wedges out. And so what you'd need to do is just take a, a drill bit, just tap a little hole through here, put a peg through there so that it doesn't try to push apart. All right, so our uh, epoxy is all cured out and I went ahead and just took a power plane and just cleaned up this joint, took all the excess glue off and then I planed this, uh, these slats down to about a half an inch or so. Uh, so now what we're going to do is just go ahead and draw the back profile onto this thing, the back profile of our bow. And then we're going to go over to the, uh, the table saw over there. We're going to cut that out and just move on with the process. So I'm first just going to establish a center line on this thing. So I'm just going to pull a string on here. And I'm just going to mark these ends. All right, I'm gonna mark the center. Then I'm gonna come five inches on each side, or you can go 12 if you want a 12 inch riser. I mean, you can go six on each side if you want a 12 inch riser. I think we'll do that actually. I'm gonna come six inches up, six inches down for a 12 inch riser. Now on the, let's see here. So from our center line, I'm going to come over 32. I'm going to come up 32. So we're going to have a 64 inch bow. And then on each side of this line down here towards the end, I'm going to come over a little shy of a quarter. Same thing down here. Now you can make your knocks as, as uh, wide or fine as you, uh, as you want. I'm gonna leave them a little bit wider uh, and then towards the end of the process, I'm gonna move those in just a little bit. So the center of the bow is here. The end of the riser is gonna be about right here. And so at the end of this riser, I'm gonna make it uh, maybe I don't know, inch and a quarter or so wide. Being sure to lay it out evenly off both sides. And this is not a, 
a standard ruler, so just ignore the markings on here. It's maybe an inch and an eighth or so wide. All right, got it all marked out. We can go over to the bandsaw or the uh, table saw since I don't have a bandsaw. So I'm just gonna zip the ends off of this real quick. So I left myself a little bit of play on that uh, when I was running it through the table saw over there. So I'm just gonna bring this right on down to the lines with a, with a rasp. A hand plane would also work really well if you've got a sharp one and you've got nice clean Osage. I have neither. So I've got this thing right on down to the lines. You can see that it's pretty clean. So at this point, what I want to do is just take my piece of bamboo, lay this right on top, and then transfer this shape to the bamboo, and then we'll cut the bamboo out to match the back of this. So when you guys go to order your bamboo, uh, you can order it in two different states. So you can order it already flattened like this, or you can get it uh, more in its raw state like this. Um, just depends on what you want and how much work you want to put into it. Um, the flat ones are nice if you want to save some time uh, and if you don't have the right tools to flatten it out. You can flatten it out. You can take it from this state to a flat state with you know, just a rasp and your normal bow building tools. It's just going to take a little bit more work. Um, and you can save some money if you use or if you, uh, if you order the, um, the raw pieces like this. And so I've got a joiner here and a joiner if, you have, if you're lucky enough to have one, they work great for flattening this stuff out. Um, but like I said, you can do this with just a rasp. Um, it's just gonna take a little more time. All right. So I'm just gonna go right in the center of this Z-splice, make a little mark on each side. So that's, that splits this in half. Now I'm gonna find where these nodes, anytime you get a piece of bamboo like this, it's gonna have nodes and you want those things distributed evenly up and down the bow. And so I'm gonna go ahead and make another little mark right in the center of this piece of uh, bamboo on the sides as well so I can see it. And I'm gonna line that up with that center mark on this uh, piece of wood. Flip that over. Make sure everything's lined up, up and down this thing. Everything's in the center. Then I'm just gonna go ahead and transfer the shape of this onto this piece of bamboo. All 
right. All right, so my bamboo's all trimmed to shape. Uh, but before we do any glue up, we need to go ahead and tiller this just like we did the belly piece. You can see if I bend this, I'm not getting a very good arc. Uh, it's pretty stiff in the middle. Most of the bend is coming in right in here and right in here. And so what I'm gonna do, I left this thing a little bit long. I just left it full length. And so I've got an extra three inches or so on each end of this. I'm gonna go ahead and cut a knock in, in uh, the ends of this past where the bow's gonna be. And I'm gonna string this thing backwards and I'm gonna leave it like this. And ju I'm just gonna start taking material off of these stiff spots until I get a nice smooth arc over this whole thing. So you can see on this piece, I'm kind of stiff right in here, right in here. And then my limb tips out here are a little bit stiff. And so I'm just gonna, all I've got to work on is this little, uh, this little handheld belt sander, a tabletop belt sander is really nice, but I don't have one. So this is what we're gonna do. Doesn't look too bad. Got a nice smooth taper, maybe a little bit stiff in here, but that's pretty good. Let's see what the thickness is. So right in the middle of this thing, let's see here, five millimeters. And down here on the end, we're three. So we taper from five to three. Let's see what this one is. Five, four, three. There we go. So we're also gonna need to make a power lamp. This one's gonna be 12 inches long, about a quarter inch thick. It's gonna fit between the bamboo backing and the belly slats. This is gonna help to stiffen up that riser section and protect that Z splice. All right, so we're almost ready to glue this thing up. We've got uh, this shaped out. We've got our bamboo cut and shaped out. Uh, I've got a power lamb here that we're gonna uh, laminate between the bamboo and these uh, belly slats. Now, before I glue it up, I want to thin out these limb tips a little bit and kind of do some pre-tillering on this thing. If we bend on it right now, it's actually bending pretty good, but the limb tips are really stiff. And so what I wanna do is thin these out so that it starts to bend pretty good. So I could do this a couple of different ways. I could do it on a tabletop belt sander. Uh, I don't have one of those, and so I'm gonna to have to find us some other way to do it. Uh, I could put it on my uh, shave horse over there and just start taking wood off with a rasp or a draw knife or a scraper or something like that. That's a perfectly fine way to do it. Uh, or I could use this uh, power plane and just uh, take off maybe a 12 inch strip here, back up, take off another strip that's a little bit longer, back up a little bit more, take off a little bit, uh, or take off a little longer strip. And what that's gonna do, so here I would have taken off three passes, here I would have taken off two, here I would have taken off one, and by doing it that way, you'll end up with a nice smooth taper. So I've got a mark here at five, 10, 15, and 20, and I'm just gonna start the front of the power plane here, back it up, start it here, back it up, and then walk my way on back. All right, so I've went ahead and tapered these limb tips out with the, uh, the power plane. And like I said, you can do this with anything, um, farrier's rasp, scrapers, whatever you got. And you can see that I'm getting a lot more bend. This, this thing's got a pretty nice bend to it. The limb, step, limb tips are a little stiff, but that's all right. We'll fix that. But the main thing I'm looking for is just a nice smooth arc. 
Now before we glue it up, uh, I want to take a, an old hacksaw blade or something just to uh, put some striations in this and rough it up a little bit so we've got a nice surface to glue. Putting these scratches in there is going to help give that glue a place to bond, increase that surface, surface area. Same thing with the bamboo. All right, so we're about ready to glue this down. I went ahead and threw some uh, saran wrap down here <clears throat> just to keep everything clean. Once we get all the, the glue on there, put everything together, and uh, before we start wrapping this with our compression bands, we're gonna go ahead and wrap it with this, uh, this saran wrap, and that's gonna help keep the, any epoxy that squeezes out off of our, uh, our bands here. So on the edges of this power lamb, I've got a little mark right in the center here. Uh, I'm going to put a mark right dead center in the, uh, the belly laminate. And then also, I'm going to make sure that I've got a mark on my bamboo so that when I put everything together, I'm just going to line those marks up so that I'll know everything's in alignment. So before I glue everything, anything up, I'm gonna go ahead and just wipe this down with acetone just to make sure that there's no oil uh, for my hands or any other grime or anything on this stuff. I've already scored this, scored all the surfaces that are gonna be glued. So the belly side of the bamboo, uh, both sides of the power lamb, and then the top side of the, uh, the belly laminate here. Give it a once over with the acetone. So I'm going to mix this stuff at, with a little more A. It says uh, if you mix it 2A to 1B, um, it's got better physical properties. I'm not really sure what that means, but I usually mix it a little bit heavy on the, on the part A. Now this EA40 here has got a pretty long working life. I think it's an hour and a half or so. So you don't have to get in a hurry once you get this stuff mixed up. And you don't need much, just, just make sure that all the surfaces are, are wet with this epoxy. If you put a bunch on there, it's just going to squish out the sides and you're going to have a lot of cleanup to do. All right, I'm just going to lay my power lamb on there, making sure that I've got my marks lined up. coat on top of that and everywhere else.
I'm going to put just a little extra at the ends of this power lamb to fill up any gap because there's no way that you can compress this thing enough to, to get the bamboo to, to fit perfectly right there in that area. I think I've got everything glued. I'm just gonna get the light right and oops, there's a little tiny little spot. Just make sure that I can see that gleam that, that, that all of it's got just a little thin coat that there's no dry spots. a piece of tape right around the center. I'm going to throw in right at the end of my power lamb, kind of compress it down. That just helps keep everything in place while we're wrapping this with our uh, inner tube bands. So before we start wrapping this thing, we'll go ahead and take our, our cling wrap and go around the bow. I'm just going to start right here in the handle, wrap over itself, and then just as tight as I can get this thing. These are just bike inner tubes that I've cut in half. So now we're gonna put our deflex in here. So I'm gonna come out, we'll say 10 inches from the center of the bow. And now I've got a couple of blocks here that we're going to use for our reflex. I'm 
just make sure you've got everything in line because once this thing's glued up, you know, if it's, if it's off like that, it's going to stay like that. Um, you don't need a hot box for EA40. Uh, you can do it just at room temperature, uh, but it takes 24 hours. Um, if you've got a hot box where you can get it up to 150 degrees, I think is what the temperature is, you can do it in six hours. Uh, the box that I've got here doesn't get that hot. This one is just designed uh, to take the moisture content and staves down. Um, so it's not, you know, I don't want it to get that hot. Uh, this box is only probably 80 or 90 degrees. Um, so I'm going to stick it in this and just let it go for 24 hours. We'll come back to it tomorrow. So I'm going to throw a couple of clamps right at the ends of these, uh, the power lambs. And I, I can remember they were just before these nodes. So All right, into the hot box we go. The warm box, I should say. All right, so I'm gonna take this over uh, to my shave horse and just kind of clean these edges up where we had some squish out of the, uh, of the um, epoxy. And we'll take this, uh, take this bamboo backing, any kind of little overhang. Uh, I left this just a, just a hair wide. And so any little overhang, we're gonna trim that in and fit it up perfectly uh, with our belly laminate. But that's looking, that's looking good. When I'm rasping on this, I'm going to go from the bamboo into the belly. I don't want to go the other way because sometimes this bamboo has long fibers that run into it. And so if you go from the belly into the bamboo, sometimes you can catch one of those fibers and rip it out. Um, and if that, if that tear goes down into the limb, um, it's, it'll probably be all right structurally. Uh, it just doesn't look very good. So now what we need to do is just go ahead and fit a, uh, a handle section here to the, uh, the belly side of this. We'll glue that up. And uh, once we get that done, we can start in on the shaping and the tillering. About a 10 inch little riser section here made out of Osage. And you can see that it's, you know, it's not just gonna lay in there. We're gonna have to fit this to the shape that we bent this bow into. And so what I'm gonna do is just put this up here until I get rid of this gap and then I'm going to scribe and just fit this to the belly. Gore this again just like we did the the other pieces.
All right, so um, the, uh, the epoxy for the riser section is all cured out. <clears throat> what I'm gonna do now is just kind of fit this to the, uh, to the bow. Uh, we'll go ahead and just round this out a little bit. I'm not gonna shape the handle yet because uh, I haven't yet decided uh, which limb I wanna be the top and which I wanna be the bottom. Uh, but I'll go ahead and get these sides in, clean this up, and then uh, blend these fades into the limb a little bit, and then we can start, uh, start tillering this thing. So that's 60 pounds right there. Looking fairly even side to side. I think the left limb's a little stiffer coming out of the riser. And you can see that if you look very closely if you watch this handle, if, if you watch this handle very closely, you can see it tilting. As I pull it, you can see it tilting towards the left hand limb just real slightly. And so what that's, that's basically confirming what I'm seeing. Uh, it looks like the left hand limb is just a little bit stiffer and the, uh, the handle will, will rock towards the stiffer limb if you watch right here pretty close. And so I want to get the tips down just a little bit farther. They're about right here right now, and it's at 60 pounds. I want to get them to here uh, with, without going over, I don't know, 60 pounds or maybe a little bit more. And so I'm just going to take a little bit more wood off the belly. I'll take a little more off of this side since this is the stiffer side, and then we'll put it back up here. Take about... 25 scrapes or so off of that. And I'm gonna concentrate a little bit more, just a little bit right up here coming out of the fade because I think it's a little stiffer here. Um, when you go to do this, be very careful right in here. It's very easy to get it just a little bit too thin. And if you get a little too thin right there, you're gonna create a hinge and then you're gonna have to take the, the whole limb down to match that weak spot. You know, if you're new to bow building, uh, basically what I'm doing in this tillering process is I'm looking for stiff areas and weak areas. Uh, the weak areas, you leave it alone, you don't take any wood off, and then stiff areas, you're just removing wood from the belly side of this bow to get that to bend a little bit more uh, and have a nice smooth arc. left limb still looks stiff to me. So I'm gonna take a little off of that one. I'm gonna leave the right limb alone. And then I think we might be able to get a string on it. I was taking wood off this bow and I just noticed something uh, that could create a potential problem here. Uh, I think we can, I don't think it's the doom of the bow, but it's definitely not something that uh, is desirable. I'm gonna point it out so that you can hopefully avoid it on your bow. But it looks like right here, just at the side, just on the, this side of this node, I got my bamboo backing thinner than it is on this side. There's a noticeable step up in the thickness of the backing um, here versus here. And so when I put the calipers on here, this is 14 and a half mils and this is 15 and a half mils. So I jump up from in that much, I jump up a, a full millimeter. Um, and so what, I'm, what I've done is just I've marked the belly side corresponding with this, the thin side of this, uh, 
or this thin spot on this backing so that I'll know do not take any more wood off the belly in this spot. We're just going to have to make up the thickness um, by leaving a little bit more belly wood and hopefully uh, we can recover from this boo-boo. All right, so I went ahead and took some off the stiff limb and then I took my rasp and just kind of uh, took a little bit more out uh, to make these little areas where I got this a little thin to make these a little bit more even and flow into the limb as far as the total thickness goes. Uh, straighten that out a little bit. And that's looking pretty good. So we're pulling right at Oh, maybe 64 pounds or so. We're getting the limb tips down to right here, so I think we can go ahead and see about putting a string on this thing. I'm gonna cut my knocks in and go from there. short but not bad a little stiff on this side I'm gonna get a little longer string to put on there sucker stout oh man take a little more off this side well, it didn't blow up, that's a good thing. So before I go any farther, I'm just going to take a little bit off of right in here. You could probably, if you put the calipers on there, you could probably see that it's a little thicker. Let's see here. Yeah, so if you slide the calipers on there, put it in a thin spot and just slide it. You can feel the calipers sliding in your hand, like getting, getting wider. limb here still looking a little stiff. Doesn't take much once you start getting close to the final tiller. Doesn't take much to change it. A 
like to, when I'm tilling these bows, especially with self bows, you know, that might have a little bit of character to the limbs, um, which doesn't really apply to this bow, but if you are building self bows, something to keep in mind. I like to switch them back and forth, side to side, because sometimes if you switch those things, it'll make, uh, you know, the way the limbs are bending in relation to one another, it'll make those differences really stand out if you turn it one way or the other. Now, one of the questions I get regularly is how do I get to a certain draw weight or can I make a bow that draws, you know, whatever, 70 pounds or 60 pounds or 55 pounds? And the answer is yes, absolutely. You can make this bow whatever weight you want. Um, and the way that you do that is that you just continue to remove wood off the belly until you get to that weight that you want. And so to start with, the bow is gonna be very heavy. And so once you get things even side to side, you get your bends, uh, your limbs bending on a nice smooth arc. Once you get that done, then you just start removing wood off the belly side, evenly side to side, to keep everything even side to side, and then also keep that arc. Just keep removing wood until you lower that weight down to the, whatever weight you want. Okay, I'm gonna give a little tiller measurement. So I'm gonna measure, take my bow square here, I'm gonna measure from the belly to the string just outside of the, uh, the riser here on both sides. The measurement itself doesn't matter, it's just uh, you're looking for the, the, um, the distance relative to one another. So we're at right on a six and five, or six and seven eighths and right at seven. So uh, this bow's got, you know, if we make this, so the measurement here was seven inches, this is set uh, six and seven eighths. So if we make this the top limb, this bow's gonna end up with just a slight positive tiller, which is exactly what we want. So the tiller looks pretty good the way it is. I think I'm just gonna leave it just like this. Right now it is 54 pounds at 28 inches. Uh, my draw length is more like 29, and so we're gonna be drawing a few pounds over that. Um, and uh, we're just gonna go on from here. I'm gonna go ahead and shape this handle up a little bit more, and then we'll cut a shelf in, and uh, you guys can take it from there. Right. So this thing doesn't have any kind of shelf or strike plate material on it at all. I went ahead and shaped the handle up, cut my shelf in there. Everything looks like it's aligning pretty good. The brace height is, I don't know, it's a little low, but I think it'd be all right. Let's see what she does. Not too bad, that actually, so it was very quiet, even without, um, strike plate or shelf material. That was a 60, 65 shaft with a 190 on it. And it looked, the, the flight looked really good and there was no noise, it was very quiet. And so that tells me that there's, uh, with that, sh that shaft and this bow, um, I'm not getting any kind of slap or anything like that on the, uh, on the strike plate. And so that's probably what this bow is gonna want. And like I said, the, the flight was perfect. Pretty quick too. I don't know what it would be shooting, but it's, uh, I don't know, there's no hand shock. It's, it it's draws smooth, it's, uh, it's a sweet shooting bow, but um, I'm pleased with the way it turned out. So as far as the build goes, this thing is, is done. 
Um, the finishing, uh, you guys can finish it just like you would any other bow. Uh, one thing that I'll say is this rind, like if you're gonna put any kind of aniline dye or leather dye or anything like that on this to try to stain the wood, um, the rind on this bamboo is not gonna take any kind of stain. Uh, so you're gonna need to scrape that off. But if you do that, just be careful that you don't scrape down into the bamboo too much and violate any of these fibers there because that could weaken the back. All right, so there's a couple of things that I wanna explain now that this thing is done that I probably didn't hit very well during the build of the, of the bow. Uh, one of them is how I laid out the bamboo on the back of these, uh, these slats that I glued together. Now, if you'll notice the, uh, the nodes here, first of all, you want the bamboo nodes distributed evenly on both limbs or approximately evenly. So I've got you know, one here and then one two thirds of the way out. I've got one here, one two thirds of the way out on this limb. Ideally, you would like to have a node kind of somewhere in the middle of the handle and you want to avoid nodes right around where your fades run into uh, your working part of your limb. And the reason you want to try to avoid that, like I haven't done here, like I have not done here, is because when, you, when your fades run down into your limb, if you put a node here where I have, it immediately swells up into a big fat node and it, it, it basically takes your fades and just makes them longer. Cause this, you're not gonna get a lot of action right here where these nodes are. And so if you can, if the bamboo that you have works out with the length of wood that you have, you want to try to avoid having a node at right here where the fades uh, stop. I couldn't do that. With this length of bow and the piece of bamboo that I had, it just wasn't gonna work out. And so I had to distribute these things the way that they are here. Not ideal, but it still works. Now, another thing that I did on this bow was something called trapping the back. And what I mean by that is if you look at this bow closely, if you look at the backing of this thing, you'll notice that the, the edges of the bow limb come up and then once it hits the backing, the backing kind of is laid in like that on both sides. And so it has this kind of trapezoidal shape to these limbs. The reason I've done that is because it'll narrow the back out and it avoids overpowering the belly. And so if I had left this backing full width and it had not trapped that back, I was afraid that I was gonna get the belly, to get the tiller and get to the weight that I want, I was afraid that I was gonna get the belly too thin and then the backing could have overpowered and crushed the belly uh, or these belly slats. And so um, there's, there's two ways to avoid that. One is trapping the back and the other one is just getting your backing strip thinner than I did. Either way works. Now the vast, vast majority of my experience in bow making is with self bows. I've only made a small handful of these things. And so there are some other videos online that are very detailed, made by guys who specialize in these types of bows. I'm gonna to link to some of those uh, in the video description down below. And so if you really, really want to know the ins and outs of this type of laminated, natural material laminated bow like this, go and check out some of those other guys' videos uh, because like I said, I, this is not my specialty. I can build these bows, but I don't know all the, the, the fine nuances uh, that they do. So go check out those videos and um, you're bound to learn something there. So uh, subscribe to the channel. Um, check us out on Patreon. I've got tons of bow building videos over there and we'll see you guys next time.